Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Janelle Cooper and I want to share with you today this really super cute cardigan made out of granny squares. I was inspired to do this because I did a search for granny squares and then all these super cute cardigans were coming up on Pinterest and they were, the one that really inspired me the most was the cute little one that had the heart in the middle and then um, was all the different fall colors. But you can't buy that pattern. She's just selling the cardigan. It's like over $100. And I was like, oh my goodness. So I decided that I was going to sort of use that picture to try and figure out my own cardigan. First of all, these are the things you're gonna need. I sketched out what I wanted to do. This sketch is gonna change because I've already realized, because I've already finished most of it um, ahead of time. See how pretty that is? Um, that uh, I am not a preteen. <laughs> And I'm gonna need a little bit more width on my um, arms and on the sides. So we're actually gonna add a strip of three squares here, a strip of three squares here, but that's gonna be awesome because I didn't really want a seam here anyway. I wanted to do the join as you go granny squares all the way around with no seams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you one square and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna show you how to join it as you go, and then I'm gonna just have you follow this little picture. And if you can actually follow it just the way it is, um, just know that we're going to be adding onto the sides, um, and it's gonna be super easy to do that. So I took the picture from the inspiration and I counted how many squares were in her jacket, which was seven. Then I measured from one wrist to the other with my arms stretched out, I measured from one wrist across my back to the other wrist. And that came out to, I believe it was 45 inches. I took the, um, the multiple of seven that I was closest to. So there are, we know that on the main strip of this, that's the one continuous strip in the entire jacket is this back part and there's seven squares in it. So if you take the measurement and you divide it by seven, then that's how big each square should be, right? So I rounded it up to 49 inches because I figured I would rather have them be a slightly big instead of slightly small. Um, and then I divided that by seven. So each square is seven inches wide. So this is customizable to whatever size you want. The size I'm making is, I would consider an adult medium, maybe. So for me, it's 49 inches. The multiples of seven are here for you to work with for those of us who don't have our multiplications, our multiplication tables still memorized. Um, I went with 49. So what I did find in doing this is going with 49 made the square smaller than the ones in the original inspiration picture. So I knew that I was going to have to make an adjustment at some point, but I just went ahead and started making the original piece knowing that I may have to make some changes, which I will be making changes. First, I would recommend sketching it out. You may not do it all pretty and colorful like I do, but just sketching it out gives you a nice kind of visual in your head of what you wanna do next. Um, you're going to need a hook. Because I chose to use I Love This Yarn, I went with a size H hook. So um, you're gonna need a needle. You're gonna need some place to put all your scraps because there's gonna be a lot of scraps. Um, and you're going to need your scissors, right? So for yarn, um, I chose, for my main body color, I chose I Love This Yarn. This is the daisy color. It's just Red Heart with Love. Nothing super fancy. This is also Red Heart yarn. This is the center of the daisy. This was just a pink that I liked. It's actually a size three. These are all size fours. So I end up doing an extra stitch in there. It doesn't matter because it doesn't change the stitch count at all. So whatever color you like, I just chose an acrylic you could choose a three or a four to go in there. Um, you don't have to use the exact yarn that I use. You can use anything that is even similar in size. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you, oh, also you're probably gonna want some of these because when it start, when you get to the point where you are going to be um, trying it on and making sure it fits you, you're gonna wanna pin some stuff together to see what it actually looks like. And then of course, a measuring tape maybe some Netflix, because <laughs> um, this is not a short project. Um, when you're making this many granny squares, it's gonna take you a little while. So um, I actually watched an entire season of a show <laughs> making this. So um, I'm gonna make the first square for you and show you how to join as you go. But I basically started with this center square, and then as I was joining as I went, I joined this one to this one, this one to this one, and I just made one long line. 
right? And then I joined the back three, and then I joined these ones. Right now I'm to this last piece. Actually, I think this one right here. We're doing a magic circle. So to start with a magic circle, you basically just wrap it around your hand, go it underneath this and grab that piece, right? Usually this is how I do a slip stitch or a slip knot. We're not gonna do a slip knot, we're just going to do chain one and that's gonna hold it tight right there. So then chain up another one. This is gonna count as your first stitch. So then you're going to do a um, double crochet, it just over the top of both of these pieces of yarn. Just like that. So now I want you to do a total of 12 double crochets. So we've already got the chain two, which counts as the first one, and then this one. We're gonna do 10 more around before we pull it tight. Okay, so this is made up of one chain up two and 11 double crochets. So now we get to this point, we're just going to take this string right here and we're gonna pull it. This is the magic part of the magic circle. Pull that nice and tight and then go over to the top of the chain two and you're going to um, wrap or yarn over, pull through both of those for a slip stitch, just like that. So you should have 12 stitches all the way around. On magic circles, <laughs> I've heard people say that one, they end up with a knot in the middle or two, they end up, it ends up coming apart. I've never had that issue. So I'm gonna show you really quick how I weave in my magic circle so that you know how to do it so you won't have that problem. So I usually find a, a piece of yarn that's hidden down here somewhere. I don't really like knots, but um, I do like to make sure my magic circle is secured. So I'll find a piece of yarn that's hidden down underneath there. And then I'll just do a quick little knot just to make sure that it's secure. It's nice and hidden, it's underneath there, right? Then you're going to go through these pieces right here just to weave in your ends, pull it nice and tight so it's, you know, a clean circle. Go through as many as you want. And then to, before I come back, I find another little piece of hidden yarn underneath here. Go through that so that when I go back through these pieces, it doesn't just come right back out. It's the back and forth that keeps that piece of yarn from, um, working its way out, and it also keeps the hole from opening itself up, I think. I don't know, I've never had that problem, but I see people complain about it a lot, so hopefully that will help you. And I tend to go both directions just to make sure that it's nice and secure. Round two. This, you can pick anywhere you want. I tend to not pick where I um, ended off just because you don't want those like weave-ins to bunch up on top of each other, but I honestly can't find it now. So I'm just gonna pick any one. So there should be 12 stitches all the way around. Just grab a piece of your white and pull it through and then chain one to lock it. Okay, so to do your little petals, what we're gonna do is we're going to increase them and then decrease them at the top. So they look like little pointy petals. So we're gonna yarn over and act like you're doing a double crochet. So yarn over, go through the hole, yarn over, pull up a loop, okay? So this would normally be double crochet, but you're gonna pull that loop nice and high so it's tall. Yarn over again, go through the same hole, yarn over, pull up a loop. Third time, yarn over, go through the hole, yarn over, and if you are better at it than me, pull up a loop. Okay, so now what you're gonna do, make sure you have them all on there. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna yarn over and go through, there should be seven pieces of yarn on there. You're just gonna go through all seven of them. <laughs> Hopefully you're better at that than I am, just like that. And then you're going to chain one to hold it and chain one for the space between the petals. So what it did was it made this little tall poof right there. So we're gonna do it again. You can go over the top of this yarn if you wanna weave in as you go. 
Um, I usually weave in for like three or four petals and then I um, make this go back just like I do on my other weave-ins. So, um, so this time you're gonna yarn over, you chain two, you're gonna yarn over, go through that hole right there, yarn over and pull up a stitch, pull it up tall, yarn over, pull high, and then yarn over. Now that you've got seven, seven loops on there, you're gonna yarn over and go through all seven, chain one to hold it, and then chain one for the space. And then just keep doing that until you get all the way over here. You should have 12 petals. If you don't have 12 petals, it's going to mess up your granny stitch. <laughs> so definitely make sure you have 12 on there. Okay, so here we are. I'm finishing up the last or the 11th petal. So there's chain one to end it and then chain one for the space. And then this is the 12th petal right here. Pull through all seven, chain one for the hold, chain one for the space, and then we're just gonna go to the top of this petal, and you're going to slip stitch into that, knot it, and then weave in your ends. I know, this is gonna have a lot of ends that need weaving in, but sometimes you just gotta suffer for your art. Okay, here is round three. You are going to just take your other color, your offsetting color, I chose pink. You can choose anything you want, obviously. Um, and you're just going to pull up a loop and then chain one. So the goal here is to fill these little gaps and then we're actually gonna start the granny stitches off of these petals. So it's really just for color contrast. You could skip this all together if you wanted to and just do your granny squares off of here, absolutely. I just kind of liked having a little bit of a color contrast there. So um, because this is a size, if this is a size four, just like your others, you could probably just do three single crochets in here. I'm gonna do four because it's a size three and it left it a little bit gappy. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm not gonna count that first chain, <laughs> let's make sure I get the right yarn. Um, and I'm just gonna do four single crochets right in this space. So one, two, three, four. Okay. So I'm gonna skip over the top of this and go right into the next group or the next chain hole and do four more. It is a big day for airplanes today, guys. Sorry, <laughs> two, three, four. My house is right under the um, path of airplanes going to the airport. So I'm used to it until I'm trying to record something. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my gosh, those airplanes. Plus I think my neighbors are having their house vacuumed. So there's this weird hum going on too. So hopefully you don't get to hear all that and you just hear our crochet stuff. So go ahead and continue that all the way around. This is just decorative, you guys. You don't have to do this. Um, but I, I just liked the offsetting color. Okay. I've gone all the way around on my daisy. Isn't she super cute? Um, now I'm going to just go to the top of my chain one, which is the beginning of that four, sing um, four single crochets in there. And we're just going to slip stitch to pull them together and then knot it and then weave in your ends. So what's gonna happen next, if, you're, if you do go back and look at my market bag video, which I'm gonna link that right here because there's actually a lot of cool things on there. One of them is how to make just a plain granny square with no um, embellishment in the middle, which you may want to make a jacket with just plain granny squares. I think it would be really cute. You could do all different colors or, um, and that might be um, a way you'd wanna go if you're making a smaller version too. Um, so on that video, I show how to do just plain granny squares, but I also show how to do a um, sunflower granny square too. So if you're interested in that, those are there. Um, but I am changing up the way I do my granny square a little bit. So in that video, we started our granny squares in these little gaps. But in this way, because I want that pink to show, I'm actually gonna start them right here at the tips of these little petals. So it's a little bit different. 
If you chose not to do a color there, you could still just do it in the gaps. It wouldn't matter one way or the other. So I'm gonna weave in these ends and then we'll start on the actual granny square. I love the flex of color in this. I love that there's a little bit of pink. It kind of pulls out the pink and the yellow in here and that's why I chose this yarn. Um, I don't know where the center is on this thing yet. I really wish that someone would make it so that um, yarn companies like need to have the center sticking out with a little tab on them so that you can pull the center. But I just wanted to let you know in case you're interested, this is called I Love This Yarn in Tweed and the color is navy tweed. So if that's something you're looking for, I got it at Hobby Lobby. They're super, super soft because it's acrylic, but it has this viscose in it too. Um, I just, I love this yarn, <laughs> just like it says. So I'm gonna find the center and then we're gonna get started on that granny. I'm actually gonna start right up here at the top of this, right in the in-between part between these two sections. You could go all the way down here if you wanted to, but I think that it creates too big of a loop. I kind of wanted it to be less conspicuous. So pull that through there. And we're gonna start with, as all grannies start, we're gonna do chain two. I don't count the chain two as part of the um, first granny block because I just think it's, it makes it kind of, that block looks kind of weak when I do that. So I do the chain two and then I do three double crochets. Each granny little block is gonna be made up of three double crochets. Okay, so what we're doing right now is we're gonna change a circle to a square. So to do that, I've got my three, my little cluster right there. I'm gonna do two clusters and then I'm gonna make a corner and then two clusters and then a corner all the way around. And then that will get us, that'll set it up and change it from a circle to a square. And then after that, it's a piece of cake. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the next one. There's no chain in between on these. You just jump over to the next one and then you do your cluster of three double crochets all in the same hole. Okay, so now we're gonna start the corner. And the corner is gonna be three triple crochets, a chain in between, and then three triple crochets all in the same hole. It's gonna be a little bit tight. I had someone ask me if there was a way to do a triple crochet without being long and spindly like that. Unfortunately, I think that's just the, the nature of that stitch. I don't think that there's a way to fix that. She, I think she didn't like doing it because of, she just didn't like it um, because of, she has arthritis or something and she was struggling with it. Um, what makes it easier for me is that I will wrap and go through two and then I will hold on to this. So when you wrap and you go through the other two, it keeps it kind of separated so it's easier to go through them. So I just kind of hold that. I think it's just the nature of a triple crochet. It makes it a little bit harder to get through them. Okay, so I chained one in between and we're gonna do another cluster in the same hole of triples. See how I'm holding on to that so that it pulls that hole down so you can get the hook through it better? I think that's what she was asking, I'm not sure. Oops. Okay, so what that did was it's making this circle into a square. So there's your corner right there. So now we're gonna do two more groupings of just regular double crochets in the next two holes. Okay, and then we're gonna do the next triple crochet corner. Okay, chain one in between, so it makes that little corner. Oh, 
<laughs> my little yarn monster. Okay, so continue doing that where you have two clusters, two regular granny clusters, and then the corner cluster um, for two more times, and then I'll meet you right here. Okay, so here we are at the end of the first row of granny clusters. Um, I finished this corner, and then these, this is where we started. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the top of that single crochet or double crochet right there, and we're gonna slip stitch into it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the, that's the only triple crochets you have to do in that. The rest of these are all double crochet clusters going all the way around. So this first one, it's so funny on this because this is what I have found works for me. You can do whatever you want. But on the second row, you're kind of starting to the left side of this gap right here. So rather than try to go backward and do my whole cluster right here, which you can totally do if you want to, I tend to chain my two and then go right into this cluster over here so that when I'm done, when I come back around, I'm gonna do my three double crochets and then just connect into the top of that. For some reason for me, it seems to be cleaner, but you can do them however it is most comfortable for you. So I just chained up two, I'm gonna go ahead and start my cluster over here and I'm just gonna, in each of these gaps, you're gonna put a cluster, a, a granny cluster, which is basically a cluster of three double crochets. And there's going to be no chain in between, just go straight into the next one. The only time that's different is when you're in the corner. Okay, so now we hit the corner. We're gonna do the first one. And these are not triples, we're just doing doubles because we've already made it into a square. So three double crochets and then chain one so that you can make it pointy on the end there and go back into the same hole and do three more double crochets. And then just do that all the way around until we get to here. Okay, so I've gone all the way around um, we're back to this last little space right here where I did the chain two and went across. So I'm just gonna show you how I finished that. I'm gonna do all three of my little cluster double crochets in this hole. And I'm gonna pretend like that chain two is not even there and I'm just gonna go over to the top of this granny cluster and I'm gonna slip stitch into it like that. So that'll finish that row. Okay, so um, I am gonna do one more row. Right now it's at six inches and I'm trying to get it to seven. Normally when we do this last row, if it's the first square, you're gonna finish it just like I finished that row. So you're gonna go all the way around and then you're gonna slip stitch into to join up there and then you're just gonna knot it and then be done, right? But this one, I'm actually gonna show you um, how to join as you go since I've already got quite a, quite a bit of the jacket already made. So. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to go all the way around. This is a partial row that's done. Do this row and come up to here and then stop. We're gonna join on here. So um, there will be parts of this jacket where you're joining both sides. So you would only go to here and then you would join on one side to one square and then another side to this square. Pretend like there's squares on either sides of that. Um, and then you would finish it right here, right? That's gonna be most of your squares, really, that you're doing. Um, but we're only gonna join, we're doing this one little piece right here. So um, I've already done all of this, except for this piece right here. So I'm gonna show you how to join that, this piece to this piece. But we're gonna add three in here to add width to the jacket, for me anyway. And um, I'm gonna join this side and this side at the same time as we go. So that's also gonna be on video, so you can see how to do that too. So for right now, just go ahead and go all the way around to here, to this corner, and then stop, and then I'll show you how to join. So what I love about this piece is that you're basically growing it one square at a time. So it's something that you can literally just like set aside and come back to it and just kind of build it 
you know, while watching TV or whatever. Granny squares are super easy to make. They don't take a whole lot of thought, especially after you've made the first couple. They feel like something you could do very easily. So um, this is the last square of the original drawing, which is right here, um, which is right there. So I'm gonna, after I do this square, I'm gonna pin it together and show you what it looks like on me just this way. Cause basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold it and I was gonna do a seam right there and that would match the original drawing. Except that her squares I believe were bigger than mine. Um, and it's just not as roomy as I imagined. <laughs> so some of us are a little curvier. Um, my almost 52 year old body is not gonna fit this the way like a 20 something would fit into it or maybe a preteen would, right? So, um, so I'm gonna make adjustments for that. Um, hopefully they'll work, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like without connecting these sides together because we're gonna add on to that. But for right now, here's how this first join works. You're basically going to um, continue, oops, my yarn's underneath there. So this is the corner. You're gonna do the first half of the corner, so that first cluster. Okay, so instead of doing your chain one, you're actually going to just go into the middle of this cluster. So those are the two clusters right next to each other with the chain one in between. You're gonna go right in there and you're gonna do a slip stitch to join, just like that. Then we're gonna continue doing our cluster. So do the other half, now that we're on this top part, and you're just gonna do your three, whoops, Takes a minute to get used to it. So you're gonna do your three double crochets. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna match the one that you're connecting to. Right, so now you have three double crochets butting up next to each other like that. So then you're gonna go and you're gonna go into the next gap and you're gonna slip stitch into that gap right there and then go over here and continue your next cluster okay so it should line up with this other one you're just gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the next gap and just do that all the way across until you get to the corner. Normally I would do this off camera, but I'm actually gonna do it in front of you so that you can see just the process. So basically think of them as triangles, right? The point is right here. There's the bottom point is there, goes into this gap. The top point goes into this gap. And then the other top point goes into this gap, just like that. And then these just match up. It is the easiest join Granny squares just have the easiest join ever. And this is not the join that I used in the market bag. I actually did a full on, I think it was like a um, zipper join on the other ones, which I didn't need to do. I could have just done this. It does take a little bit of forethought though, because you are building it square by square when you do it this way, where the other way you could just make a whole bunch of squares and just join them together. Okay, so find the other end, the other gap right there. Okay, so this one should be the last one. We're in the corner, the top corner. And we're just going to do our first half of the corner. 
my gosh, you guys, hopefully you don't hear all the noise. I have like a full on possible bird fight going on outside and then airplanes going over every couple minutes. And then my neighbor is having like, it sounds like they're having their carpets cleaned or something. So it's very noisy. Okay. So then you're going to go find, if you've already been working on it, there should be a seam that you've already started on. Find that seam where they all come together. So this is the top of this corner and the top of this corner come together there. I just slip stitch into this part so that they're all like crisscrossing each other. Makes for a nice clean center join. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our regular cluster. We're not joining anymore after this because it's a, it's just a one little square that's hanging down by itself. Okay, and then go ahead and finish your last cluster. Or oh, there's two to do. Okay, so this is the top or that's that chain two that got us started. This is the top of the next cluster. You're just gonna slip stitch into that to join and then knot it. And then weave in your ends. And see how like clean that join is right there? Like it's just, there's no like bump or anything. It's just nice and smooth almost like reversible at this point. So, okay, I'm gonna weave those ends in and then I'm gonna pin this together so that you can see what I'm talking about. And then we'll talk about um, how to make it wider. Okay guys, so here it is. I can already tell that I'm going to love it, but it's not quite there yet. So it's a little bit tied up in the front and it's a little bit short in the back. So if I were, a teenager say, um, it would probably be perfect. You could just go ahead and seam it. And if you wanted to add a little bit of like a rib around the bottom, which I think is what we're gonna do, um, you could do that. But because it's just not, doesn't quite fit me the way I want it to, I think what I'm gonna try, there's a couple different ways you can go about it. You can do like a granny strip instead of a square, like a long skinny strip, and just do um, connect that as you go and not have a daisy in it, just, just a regular granny strip and you wouldn't even know the difference. So that's option one, I may still do that or you could do a full square. It's gonna make this sleeve a lot looser, which I might actually like. So I'm gonna try both ways and see which way I like better. Then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the outside. I'm gonna do a rib across the bottom to just make it a little bit longer in the back. And then I may just do just maybe a simple single crochet around this side just to kind of finish it off. So that's the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a square and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna join that here. And if that ends up being too wide, we may end up doing just a granny strip. Maybe I'll show you how to do both ways. So next step. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna teach you how to do just a simple strip. And I'm gonna start like I will with the squares. I'm gonna attach as I go from, this is the front and this is the back. I'm just gonna do the bottom up and then down the arm length, right? So this is gonna add like four inch gap in between. So to do that, one thing you wanna keep in mind is that each one of these is about a half an inch. So if you wanna add four inches, you probably want to add, cause you know, one row is gonna be one full inch, right? Cause you have to do one back to back. So assume about an inch for each row that you do. So if I wanna add three, let's say three inches, then um, I'm gonna start right here with this row. So you wanna start your granny, cause your granny's gonna build as you go around in circles, right? So you actually wanna start it with four little clusters right here. So your starting chain is gonna be one chain for this cluster, one for in between. So it's gonna be chain, chain, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the starting chain you're gonna start with. And that should give you four clusters, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I don't know why it works out that way, but it does. Okay, so you're actually gonna start, you're gonna need, you're gonna use seven of these chains, but you're gonna start with eight. Chain one, which is your ninth chain, and then you're gonna do, um, that's really just building upward, and then you're gonna do double crochets back into this first, so you're gonna skip one chain and do three double crochets in that one right there. One. Three. Okay, so we're gonna call that the center cluster. There's gonna be a center cluster on the end of each end of this chain. And then this is gonna be the corner we're making to go down this rectangle. So you're gonna chain one for the corners, but you're not gonna chain one between the other ones, just on the corner ones. And then you're gonna go back into that same hole that you did the last cluster in and do another cluster. So don't chain up here, but you're gonna skip this next chain down here and go into the, the one after it. So make sure you're not skipping two. Skip that one and go into that one. Let's get that one, go to that one, skip that one, go to that one. Yep, that'll be right, okay. Sometimes it's just trial and error. Oftentimes, I don't even, not even sometimes, oftentimes it's just trial and error. Okay, so again, don't chain because we're on the side. You're gonna skip the next chain and go into this one and make another cluster. Okay, and then go into the last one. So skip this one, go into the last chain. Okay, so now that we're up to the corner, see how we made a corner right here? And we went down this lane. Now we're going to make the other corner on the other side. So you're gonna chain one. So this should be, when you're done with this row, this should be pretty much equal to this row. So you should have one, two, three, they should all be matching, right? And then it'll equal that bend right there, which was your first row of granny stitches. So I chained one, now I'm gonna go back and go back into the same hole, which is gonna be interesting because that was that first chain and you know, chaining into, going back into the first chain is always kind of like, it's tight. Okay, chain one and now we're gonna do it again. So see how we made that turn right there? That's the one corner, but now we need another corner to go back to make it a rec rectangle. So now we're gonna go back into here, same one, and we're gonna do another cluster. So you have three clusters in the end chain on each side. Okay, so Find the matching one over here. You're gonna go wherever the bottom of this um, cluster is, that's where you're gonna put the next cluster. Don't chain in between on the, on the lengthwise ones. 
or the side ones, I guess I should say. And you're only chaining in between when you're on a corner. Okay, this one. So this is that end chain. We're doing the final corner. Okay, and then you're gonna chain one because it's a corner and then you're going to go ahead and join these two together like that. Okay, it's gonna feel super awkward at first, but it's gonna match basically this. And now we're gonna build out two more rows and that's gonna give you like this far, which is what, like four inches, right? So continue doing that. We're gonna do the next row, and then on the third row, that's when we're going to uh, um, join as we go. So I'm gonna go ahead, and this is the corner. So on the corner, we're gonna go up two. So we're gonna skip over right here to this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and build this corner. So it's going to be one cluster. Get the white behind it so you can see it. And since it's in the corner, we're going to chain one, go back into that same hole. It's going to feel really awkward on this because the holes aren't as well defined since we just did one little row there. But on the third row, it should be easier, hopefully. I'm crossing my fingers. Okay, so now that we're on the side, yep, because this will be part of this corner over here. So now that we're on the side, we're not gonna chain in between anymore. We're just gonna go make our clusters into these little holes. Okay, so now this is, this is your rectangle so far. So now what I'm gonna do, this is the final row, right? I've already added, so this is, like two and a half inches, sorry. Like, yeah, like two and a half inches. So I'm gonna add another inch. So it'll be th about three and a half inches wide. So that's if you just wanna add like three and a half to four inches in between. If you wanna add the full six to seven inches, I would definitely recommend doing just a whole other square. But for this, like this is just a nice in-betweener. So I'm gonna go ahead and chain two. I'm gonna start my corner And then here we are, since we're on the final row, we're gonna go ahead and start attaching the two pieces together. So this is the front bottom two pieces of the jacket. The, this is the sleeve, right? So what we wanna do is we want to attach it starting at the bottom of the sweater. We're gonna attach as we go for this rectangle and then we're gonna do a rectangle there and a rectangle there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. It doesn't really matter where, but for me, it's gonna be easier if I just do it right here in the front. So I'm gonna find that front corner of this granny square, and that's where we're gonna attach it. I'm gonna attach it from the top though, so they all look the same. So like that, pull up a loop, pull it through, and then go ahead and do the rest of your um, corner there. Okay, so you finish the corner. Now we're gonna attach it, go back down here, and we're gonna attach this piece to the next join space right there so that they match. basically just like we did before, only now we're doing it on two sides. And then eventually, the next one, you're gonna be doing it on three sides, right? Because you're gonna start here and you're gonna work your way around. See, 
see how those are lining up? That's how we're gonna do it. So meet me down, actually meet me at the end here, and then I'll show you how to turn around and attach the other side. Okay, so we're here on the corner. We just finished this part right here. And now we're going to turn and come back this way. So go ahead and do your chain one, like usually, uh, you don't even really have to because you already kind of did a chain in this corner. So you did the chain into the corner to join it. Now go ahead and finish this corner by doing your cluster. Okay, so there's your finished corner and it matches the other piece, right? So now you're gonna go ahead and do just a cluster in the middle here. And then we're gonna come up to, to this corner. So on this corner, we're gonna start it, which is the first cluster. Okay, so now we're gonna line this up with the other side. So this is our little jacket. This is our little growing piece in the middle to make it wider, right? So now that we've come down to the end of this piece, we're gonna join it on the other side to this piece and come back down the other end. So, okay. And turn your work and go back down this side. So we're finishing that corner. And then join it right there so that these line up and then jump over to the next hole and do your little piece. And then join it. Okay, so you have finished that corner, all that's left now is this little, well, you haven't finished the corner. You finished the first half of the corner. We're gonna attach it to where these other two corners join up with each other. Make sure we have the right spot. So like, there is the corner. We're gonna grab that part right there and join it. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna finish it. We're not attaching it to that, that is the sleeve. So we're gonna attach the next piece to that. Okay, so here's where we started off. That's the chain two that we started with. You're just gonna go ahead and get to the top of that. And then you're going to slip stitch it together to finish it. And then you would knot it and then weave in your ends. Okay, so basically what we've done is we, this is the front of the jacket, this is the back of the jacket. We've basically joined them together, but we've added a little bit of um, like three inches there to it to give it a little bit of width. And we just did that with a granny rectangle. So that added about mm, almost four inches there. So I'm gonna try that on and see if that will actually work for me. Cause I think that'll actually be a nice clean underside to the jacket. Um, if it doesn't though, I have a feeling I'm gonna need a little bit more than that, so I think I'm gonna do the whole square, but um, I'm gonna try this first. Okay guys, so I tried it on, and um, I actually found that just adding those four inches, I think it's gonna fit perfectly. So I even did this thing where I connected all my, I, I assimilate or I simulated having four inches more on the um, sleeve, and I think that's gonna work perfectly too. So I'm just gonna continue on with this little piece in the middle. However, you can add a full square if you want to, um, depending on you know what fits best with your body. I would definitely try 
something like this first and see if that works. And if it is not big enough still, then you can add a full square. And you're basically going to attach it on one side, attach it on the other side, and then do your square up to the last point, up to the last row. And then you're gonna, going to attach as you go here, attach as you go here, and then attach as you go here, and then do it again on this end. So what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna do after that, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of something here on, around this part and on the ends of the sleeves, and then I'm gonna put a ribbing on the bottom to make it just a little bit longer. Okay guys, so this is really exciting. I am actually really happy with how this is turning out. And it's kind of a chilly day today. I tried this on and it's so warm and snuggly that I'm pretty excited about it. So this is how the underarm middle section worked out underneath there. Nice and clean connections there. Um, so I'm really glad that we did it that way instead of a full box, because I think a full box would have made it too bulky underneath there, at least for me. So. This is what I'm gonna do. I am gonna add ribbing to the bottom. The way this is, it sort of flares out in the back and it's not quite long enough, so it kind of sticks out. So there's two different things that I'm trying to um, do here. One, I wanna make it just a little bit longer, like maybe like that much longer. And then I also want to kind of cinch it in a little bit so that it's not flaring, sticking out in the back so it lays a little bit flatter. So we're going to actually, when I do this ribbing, I'm actually going to kind of um, cinch it in a little bit, but not too much, like I don't wanna overdo it. The other thing, my other challenge, is that this is how much yarn I have left, which is a lot more than I thought I would, which is great, um, but this is what I have to work with. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a foundation row and I'm doing it that way just because I think it'll it'll just look nicer. It'll have a nicer beginning to it than like a chained row. And I'm going to do my foundation row so that it's about, I think what I wanna do is maybe, I think two inches is kind of long. I kind of want it to be like maybe an inch and a half. So that's how far I'm gonna go on it. So a foundation row, if you've never done one, um, I have a gazillion videos that use foundation rows because I use them for everything. So um, there is an actual foundation row video that I'll post up in the corner, just like I did with the um, market bag video um, that kind of teaches you a little more in depth. But I think almost every video I do starts with a foundation row. So it won't be too hard to see different versions of it. But this is just gonna be a single crochet foundation row. It starts with two chains. And then we're gonna go back into the first chain. This is an odd color to see on camera. So if this is too hard to see, um, definitely go back to my other, my foundation row when it's done with a brighter color, it might be easier to see. So since this is just single crochet, we're gonna go into this first chain. We're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. Then we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go through one. That is the chain. So we're essentially, we're doing a chain and a single crochet at the same time. So yarn over and go through the other two, that's your single crochet. It just makes for a cleaner, whoops, I've been doing double crochets too long. So it just makes for a cleaner look. Now on here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the chain. So I want you to see this chain right here. It's like a little horseshoe that's your chain that you wanna go into. There's always, for a chain, there's always three pieces of yarn. One, two, and then this one right here is the third. You wanna go so that there's two on this side and one on this side. That's where your chain goes. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through one. That's the next chain. Yarn over and go through two. That's the single crochet. So back into this chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop chain, and then single crochet. You're basically just doing two rows at once. But it also, not only does it make it stretchy, it also makes it a little bit more um, accurate as far as measurements go. Because if you try to chain, you're kind of guessing at the number of chains you need. I did not do that right, I don't think. You're kind of guessing at the number of chains you need um, until you get there. And then I don't know if, if you guys are anything like me, but I have chained, thought I had it right, did my single crochet and found out that I had way over guessed or under guessed or whatever. So this just tends to be a little bit more accurate, I guess. So 
that looks about like what I, let's measure it. So just remember that this part right here is actually, this is what it's gonna look like when it's together like that. And I may have over gone. So let's go back a stitch. Let's see if that's better. So that's about an inch and a half. Doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, because I'm just making this up as I go along, right? But that's about where I was hoping for. So I got to the end of this. Doesn't matter how many stitches are in there because we're just gonna do a basic rib stitch. So in order to do that, we need to attach this to our piece. So we're gonna find the stitch that we wanna go into and we're going to just attach it just like we did with the others, just do a slip stitch to attach, okay? Then go into the next stitch, another slip stitch. And then turn it. And you're gonna go back up the way you came, but you're gonna go into the back loop only. And then make sure your yarn's on the right side. So right here, back loop only. This is just a regular single crochet now. Kind of see how that's working out there. Weaving in your ends, you'll be able to kind of straighten it out even more, but I think that'll be fine. So then you just chain one, turn it and go back, okay? So kind of make sure that that is the length that you want before you continue too much further on, right? And that seems about right. I've done rib stitches on other projects and sometimes I forget that um, you all haven't been there for every project that I've videotaped. So this seems like an old stitch to me, but it might be a new stitch to you. So I am going to just clarify real quickly. There are five main stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then when you get to the top of that, you're gonna chain one and then you're gonna turn it and when you go back, you're, you, you only go through five stitches, but you're only going through the back loop of that stitch. So, sorry, this yarn's in the way. So there's two loops to every stitch, right? You wanna take only the back loop and you're gonna do single crochet all the way down, but just for the five stitches or however many you had for your measurement that you wanted. Oops. Okay, so that's the fifth one. Now what we wanna do, this is the one that we slip stitched in last time. So we're gonna go to the next stitch, we're gonna slip stitch into that one. That just anchors it down. Then we're gonna slip stitch into the other one. This is the equivalent of doing a chain up or a chain one. Then you're gonna turn it back. You're gonna skip that slip stitch, the either of those, and you're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five. This is the stitch that you wanna go into. So single crochet into the back loop of all those five stitches. Okay, so then chain one, turn it, and go back the way you came. And we're just gonna keep attaching as we go. The only difference is that because we're cinching it in a little bit, um, maybe like three times per square. Um, so like maybe one on the ends and then one in the middle. Um, you're gonna want to, instead of, so this is the one we went through last time, you wanna go, you wanna chain through this one. So slip stitch to join, slip stitch to join. And we're kind of to the middle because the flower's right there. So go ahead and do a third one, but you're still gonna go back into the original five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is the stitch that you're gonna go back to. So you're kind of just cinching it in a little bit as you go. Not a lot, just enough so that it lays a little flatter. So go back to the original five. One, two, three, four, five. Go into the back loop of that stitch. All 
all the way down. Okay, hopefully that clarifies it a little bit better. See, you can't even tell where you're gathering it. It just it looks much more natural, but it's also gonna cinch it in a little bit. So I will see you at the end of this row. Okay guys, I finished the ribbing on the bottom of this. I actually love the way it turned out and it's, um, it just kind of pulled everything together and made it nice and clean on the bottom. Um, so I still have all this yarn, which I'm super surprised that I still have all this yarn to work with. So I think the one thing that I would change, I don't mind the sleeves just being, having kind of a natural um, scallop there because of the squares. But I think after trying it on, since I have yarn to work with, I think I'm gonna build up this inside edge a little bit, just enough to kind of straighten it out so it's not, doesn't have this like um, indent from the squares. So I think I'm just gonna do, um, I'm gonna start with just a half double crochet. So I'm just gonna go very, very simple. I'm just gonna attach some yarn right here and I'm just gonna work my way around with just a very simple half double crochet in every stitch. If I can find the end of the yarn again, that's my nemesis today. And um, if, I, if I feel like it needs to, if I have enough yarn and I feel like it needs to be built up a little more, I might do two rows of that just to kind of, you know, give it a nice clean edge. And then I think we will be done with the whole thing. So let's, I'm just gonna start off like that, just pull in a loop, and then I just went right back into the same, um, the same hole there. And then I'm just gonna do a regular half double crochet in every stitch, just like that, very, very simple. Just go all the way around and see how we like that. So one thing I noticed is that um, it does give it a nice smooth edge until you get to the indent. And I think that there are one or two ways you can fix that. You can either do sort of an elongated half double crochet where you just pull it up and finish it up here and that, that will kind of fix it. Or you could just do a double crochet right there. Um, whichever you think would be that would work better for you. Let's see what a double. So a double might actually fill that in better. So see how that indentation sort of gone? That might actually work nicer for that finished row. Let's see what it looks like after I do a couple of these. So there you go. That's a lot, that's a lot smoother edge there. Kind of gets rid of that indentation. So I think I'll stick with the double in those little creases. Here it is. I'm actually so excited about how this turned out. I ended up doing the edging here on the front and I still had plenty of yarn. I don't know why, but so I went ahead and did some edging to match on the sleeves to just kind of straighten everything out. And I just love the way it turned out. And the minute I put it on, it's like instantly warm and snuggly. Um, this is how it looks on the back. Very excited. So I hope you enjoy this pattern. I hope it's something that you get to put together yourself and I would love to see any variations you come up with. So if you want to join me on my Facebook group, it's called Janelle's Quarantine Crochet. And um, you're welcome to come in and share pictures. And if you need help, you can ask for help. And everybody there is very wonderful. This has been super fun and I can't wait to see what you come up with. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye.